Hello everyone, welcome back to Last Call BBS. I thought we would get back into uh, Chip Wizard Professional today. Just, what, five puzzles left? So, let's have a look at the and or combo gate. Which, uh, I forget if we read this on the channel before. I, I, I took a look at it at some point anyway, so. Basically, uh, it's, so if gate is a where is that signal gate is a, uh, a control signal that says whether your output should be the and of in a and in b or the or of in a and in b i haven't really put any thought into how to solve this um so we'll do that here i guess uh so let's see if I mean, we could build a truth table out of this, right? Like, it has eight. Mm -hmm. The truth table would have eight entries, wouldn't it? Right, for the, the two to the eight possible, or two cubed possible ways of combining all these signals. Um, Like, it seems sort of obvious to start by building an AND gate and an OR gate, and then, like, figuring somehow I'll figure out a way to connect them. Uh, but maybe that's not what I want? I mean, I don't know. I guess it kind of is, right? Because gate... The gate input is if it's high, you should have an and. So we want it to be like we want to combine with the and combine gate with and in, a tr in as a transistor, and we want to combine gate with or as a transistor, right? and then send the results of each of those to out? Like, I think that seems plausible, why not? Okay, so let's say we said, um, I'll put the, what is this, the and? Yes, this is and. Uh, I'll put the and here. And, Or here? Wait. This is not an or. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've forgotten what or does. Um, how did we do or before? Ah. An or gate requires two transistors. I see. Oh, is that necessary? I guess so, because otherwise you, um, Whichever way you combine, like, two signals via pink and blue silicon, you can't get an answer out if just one of them is set, can you? I mean, like, you can if you carry the... If you carry one of them, well, either way you need two transistors though. Like a single transistor of, no. Well, right, a single transistor constructed like this, if only this signal were high, the result would be high over here, right? So 
so maybe what we can do is rather than building an or and an and 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 then additional logic like two more transistors for combining them that seems very difficult to fit doesn't it like this plus another transistor for the and gate plus two more transistors for choosing which to use seems tough maybe what we can do is construct only a as one of our intermediate results, only b as the other intermediate result. Hmm, that doesn't seem any better, does it? I guess I'm just describing what I've done here, sort of? No, I'm not. Uh... And then you could you could combine those two with just metal. Oh, but that would never be true. Only A and only B are never both true. Yeah, and that doesn't seem helpful for... Well... But if either of them is true, then that's the result we want for... when gate is high, right? If either only A or only B is true, and gate is high, then yes. But we don't need to, con to isolate them in that case. We could just say if gate is high, then like, you know, A and either of A or B can, can get there. That, I'm like, ugh. So could I fit like three more gates in here? It seems hard. But you could imagine a little T-junction here. To compute A and B. And we could fit that. But it would involve routing in B all the way like that to here. So we would use up quite a lot of space. Do we have enough left for the other stuff we have to do of like combining with gate? You know, I bet we probably do. Cause this whole metal thing here is not, is not gonna be part of our other solution because we don't wanna send that to the output. We wanna use this as an intermediate result. This is the or signal. Yeah, maybe we can just make an or here and an and there. Okay, let's give it a try. All right, and so it is the same layout here. That's sort of nice. Um, Right, and I remember we wanted to do this. So this is the output of our OR gate. Now let's put another AND gate in. Or let's put an AND gate in anyway. Uh, which wants to look like that. And I think we probably want to do this on the silicon layer, right? So I don't think it matters much what color I send, we'll take blue. So I need to route metal over top of this, right? Or do I? I guess I could have done this with silicon. It hadn't occurred to me before, but if you connected these two, 
I don't know. It would do. It would be weird. Because <laughs> I think it would be sending signal back to here, which I guess would be okay. Huh. Anyway, so... We obviously don't have much space left for gates here, but is it enough? Let's see. So we want, like, if gate is low, we want to send this signal through. Right? Which means I guess this wants to be in pink silicon with gate in blue to interrupt it. Uh, there's no. Oh, the output is here. That's good. I was thinking it was here, and then I was kind of getting in my own way. The problem is now the only way left to fit a transmitter in, or a transistor in is, well, there's not a lot of ways, are there? Right, this, this is the only one that fits with the current layout. So, like, I could try that. I'm not sure this works. Maybe it does, though, because this... No, this is the output of my ore, and I don't have room to squeeze it over, do I? Uh, okay, but it looks like I could have maybe done this on the metal layer instead of silicon and just leave these two connected to each other. So if I run a blue silicon, but I don't want blue silicon. I want, okay, well these two don't, ah! These two don't need metal over them at all, I think, or vias for that matter, so I guess I, and delete those. So I can actually use up relatively little space on this connection. In fact, I don't even need that via. I can just go there. So, okay, that gives me a bit more space, right? Because if I connect these two, they're now the output of my OR gate. And I think I can manage to turn them pink like this. And then send the blue running through, right? So finish up the pink. The gate output, I mean, okay, this is spending a lot of silicon for no real reason. But does this make any sense? What happens if I press play? The output is always zero. Well, that's not great. Oh. Did I? <laughs> Or no, wait, I went high sometimes, didn't I? Yeah, it's not always at the bottom. It goes up there for some reason I don't understand. Okay, so let's do a step here. Oh, wait a minute. I have gate interrupting both of them. That's crazy. If gate is high, we don't send anything because we interrupt both signals. That's not what I was supposed to do.
Okay, I mean, but like, uh, this is, what is this? This is in A and in B. And I want to send that if gate is low, right? So I think this is fine. That must be why I occasionally got one thing right. But this is in A or in B, and I should send it if gate is high. So I just need to switch this bit to pink silicon, right? Um, and obviously this to blue. Still totally wrong. Very exciting. Okay, why? So when they're all low, we send nothing. Great. When in B is high, but gate is low, we should. Oh, did I get this backwards all along? Gate is high, it's, it's gate's high, it's and. If gate's low, it's or. Uh, so this should be blue. Okay, I should swap the colors on both of these. Actually, I can save myself this row, this column by, by routing it like this. And then this one, right? No, it's total junk. I mean, I don't know, I got some things right over here. What am I getting right? When gate is high, I'm getting it right. When gate is low, I'm getting it wrong. Or when gate is low, I'm always sending zero, okay. So here's a case where I should be sending something different than I am, right? At this time, I should be sending high. Why should I send high? Because gate is low, and at least one of these two is set. This is or. We're in or mode. So why am I not doing that? Oh, I don't have that via here. When I, when I swapped colors here, I didn't add a via. There we go. Hey, look at that. Actually, like, one of the good guys this time. Didn't make it all the way down to 20, which seems unbelievable, or 24, but uh, managed to avoid using an entire column. Good work. Do I really want to do another? Let's at least look at the description. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll celebrate and do some Dungeons diagrams to fall asleep to. Uh, what are we doing today? When noisy is detected, clean should go high for six cycles and ignore any further activations during that time. Well, that's why they called this a debouncer, I see. So we read... Hmm. Well... I 
have kind of an idea. But I haven't really got it like fleshed out yet. I don't even know how I can say it very well. Um, we need something that activates if either noisy or this other signal I have in mind is high. The other signal was is like was noisy high last cycle. But it's not quite that because after six cycles we need to turn that one off again. Right? So like... We need... How do we do an or? I mean, it looks like this, right? Oh, except it would be fed by voltage usually, right? Uh... Yeah, and I can't do any shortcut like welding together bits of metal because then we'd be driving noisy high at a time we're not supposed to. So, I don't know. I mean, I, no, this doesn't work because, well, no, this has to, hmm. When noisy is high, Okay. Well, okay, it doesn't have to be right up against that, I guess. It can be like this, right? But this is taking up a lot of space. I don't know if I have room to do everything I need to over here now. So we have this OR gate, and one end of it goes straight out to clean. You know what, make it this end. That, what, that, there's a lot less space to work with down here. And I, okay, and this, like, feeds back to here here almost but not quite um it needs wait a minute what's what's the other input to this thing one of these is taking noisy let's say this this one, I think. This one is taking as input like a version of what was going here. Like, okay, we almost want this. This would be like Let's, let's say we did this. I think what we might accomplish is not solving the puzzle. Don't worry, I'm not confused about that. Um, but I'm trying to characterize what, we, what this would do. Um, what, where is this going to? Oh, right. It just needs to be wired to this one. So if either one of these lights up, then both clean and this lights up. So I think this is like, once you flip the switch, it stays on forever, I think is what we've made here, right? Yes, so it ignores the switch forever once you turned it on. So we just need this, except that instead of going to here, The it feeds into something which tries to go here, 
but fails, but but has something that interrupts it after six ticks, six cycles, I guess. So, first of all, I think we might need this space. Although, on second thought, how the heck am I going to use it? Well, of course, by doing this, right? Now I have something going to clean, and then something that goes through several capacitors. So we don't have a via here. In fact, we don't have all this metal, right? We're not actually connecting those to this. We need this to be Am I really like short a space? Cuz I I feel like this is meant to be the blue end of something that interrupts this pink. No, I think I can do this. So if I, if I wire the metal in like that, then I'm not connected directly to this pink. I can have this blue come in and interrupt, right? So what happens now if I step Now this lights up the output as it desired and stays lit up because we're still feeding back to it. And then we shut it off just in time. Oh, so smart. 16 is a little like unreasonable, don't you think? <laughs> um, I'm just pleased I managed to do even this well. Solve it at all. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see any great opportunities for improvement here. Um, I guess, like, I'm taking up 15 spaces just on these OR gates, or, well, 12 on just the OR gates, and there's no way I could fit in a bunch more capacitors. So there must be something that doesn't involve building an OR gate exactly. But, all right, I'll take it. Now we can look at all of the remaining puzzles. What's this one? We're building weird oscillators? We have no inputs and four outputs? So what can you do with capacitors here? Obviously you have to do something with capacitors to build these like loops. But like, can you just build one circuit and then do some clever stuff with transistors to delay it? I don't, I don't think you can take like the output of any of these and delay it to get the other. Now, you can take out A plus and send it through one transistor to get out A minus, right? Where you let it through, you let through voltage only if A plus is low, basically.
And likewise, you could you could take out B and you know get a flipped version of that, costing a capacitor. The problem is this looks like I don't know. Is it? Does it take a lot of space? Like, let's say we just wanted to build out A plus only. Or what, what's easiest? I think out A plus is fine. So we want something that feeds voltage to out. Let's put it here. Unless it's been done recently, right? Um, I don't know. I don't want to do this one right now. Let's see if any of the others look like something to challenge near the end of a video or not. Presumably not. They're near the end of the puzzle. They should be hard. And they near the end of the game. When read is activated, data should. Oh, so we're like kind of we're we're implementing a sequencer here, kind of. When someone says read, we send them h h l l h l and then stay high until read goes off. Huh. How the heck do you do that? No idea. All right, let's go look at, wait, did something happen when I clicked? Oh, I dragged the window around, I see. It's full screen, but I guess not actually. It, it, it's the same, it's a non-full screen window, the same size as the screen. What is a pulse echo detector? Out one should turn on when the first pulse is detected. And then out two, should turn on when the second pulse is detected. And so what about this, and, and so reset, so what about this when they have three pulses in this in a single reset? So out one goes high, out two goes high and stays high. Okay, oh, I don't know, this looks hard. Get me out of here. I, I'm very happy, even if I never solve another Chip Wizard professional puzzle, I'm very happy to have gotten as far as I did. Um, yeah, I guess we only really have time for Dungeons and Diagrams, right? Wardens of the Uncaged Chaos. Let's see. Well, this this stuff all has to be treasure room. And the treasure room can't extend up here because then this would have too many walls. So that's the shape of the treasure room. This can't be the way out, and this can't be the way out. But this could. This one is useful, right? Like this can't be the only wall, so it's open. Likewise here. There's only one wall in this row, which means one of these two is open, so these are both closed. And these are open as well, because the only wall is going here. I think this could be open, right? It's not a dead end because you could go down as well as to the monster's lair. There's only room for one more open space in this column, which I guess is interesting. And only one more wall here. Actually, wait a minute. There's only one more open space in this row as well, right? There have to be two walls. Is that interesting? 
Not really. If it were the opposite, if I already had like this wall placed, then I would know one of these is open and I could say that's a wall, but I can't do that. Probably the treasure room is where I need to focus, I guess. I mean, there's the same thing I often say about these rows with six, which is that, like, it has to, I, like, I, sometimes I can prove whether you have to pass through it twice or just once. Right now, I don't see any obvious evidence in either direction. Maybe we go through it twice, you know, through here and then up this way or something, right? But maybe you only go through it once, you escape this way, go here, and no. If you were only going through it once, where would it be? It would have to be over here, right? Seems possible. Is this, does this have to be a wall here? What if it were open? We would have our only wall there. And then this would have to be a two by two, right? So, so that's no good. This does have to be a wall. Well, I bet the same argument applies here. No, because it's not near a corner. Right. If this were open, we'd have that. And that. And this. But, like, I don't know. None of that seems impossible. And I don't want to bifurcate all the way there. So that one we proved, but no further. Oh, this can't be the exit to the treasure room, can it? Well, maybe. No, because then these would both have to be walled off and we would be stuck. So that's a wall as well. And this couldn't be the exit to the treasure room either, because then it would be walking into a dead end. So we have a wall there. And this can't be the exit to the treasure room. It wouldn't be walking into a dead end, but it would be putting way too many open spaces here. So we have this. There's only one more wall in this row now. It can't go here. Then it can't go here, because this would be a dead end. Could it... It definitely looks like it could go there. That seems okay. Could it go here? I don't think so, because then this would have to connect up... Oh yeah, I guess it could. So I think either of these is valid, given what we have so far. Now this could be the exit to the treasure room, because we could go like that. That's possible. We know now, at least, that Mm. 
Well, since we can't connect up through here anymore, there must be a hole in the six wall on this side of this block and one over here, or we could never connect up. Is that useful? Maybe. Well, this can't be a wall, right? Because if it were, this would have to like, not in order to not be a dead end, we'd need these to go to be allowed to, to be open. So that's not possible. And in fact, this is the wall in this column, row, whatever. And I guess the way we resolve this dilemma is by how these threes and fours look. One of them will end up having t needing a wall up here and one of them won't, and that'll resolve these. Or I guess maybe this one will get filled and anyway, if, if we receive, if we finish, I think any one of these columns down here will get this whole area, but we can't get this area without those. There are three walls in this area. That's sort of interesting. And only one here. How do we avoid making a two by two in this area, I guess, is a question we might ask. I mean, I guess something like this would be enough. because that would be illegal. But like, no, that's illegal too, actually. Hang on. So if this is a wall, then this would also have to be a wall, right? And if this is a wall... Hmm. Yeah, this kind of reminds me somehow of like, Binary Sudoku, this kind of like, when you have, um, I don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but like when you have something that can't, ugh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not very good at binary, binary Sudoku anyway. This has to be a wall because we know that this whole area here has only one wall. And so it kind of behaves like these sixes that I've looked at that have, when, when there's just one gap in, in a solid wall, we know you can't do like this to, to like jog through it. The only way to pass through it is with a single straight gap where you go like that. And we know also that that can't happen on this row. First of all, because it would mean touching the treasure room twice, but also because we know this six has a single gap in it in this direction. So this can't be the way through either the six or the four. Now, okay, there, there's a, a potential disproof to that, which is like, wait a minute, how do you know you need to pass through this four? Well, the answer is there's still squares over here we have to traverse. because of this three and this two. Yeah. 
So something that would work here, I don't have any proof necessarily that it's the answer, would be like that, right? Turn all this to walls and like, you made it out of here, okay. Make that a wall as well. That would be a wall. You know, I don't, I don't have any proof right now that any of this is correct. I'm just noting that there is a correct way. There is a way you this could work. So I haven't obviously broken anything yet. Um, if this is a wall, this has to also be a wall. If this isn't a wall, this has to not be a wall. So they have these two have to be the same. Could they both be wall? It would be a little weird, I think, to have because that would mean this is all non-wall. But I don't I don't think that's like that impossible. Could they both be open? No, because then we would have this. No, we wouldn't. We would have this. Well, actually that is no good, isn't it? Because then there's no way... No, that's not true. You could. I was going to say there's no way to get back over here. But of course there is. Just walk this way. You would have to do all this. Ah, but you'd be leading back to a dead end. That's why these can't both be open because it would constitute the X okay so first of all let's remind ourselves that they do have to be the same like if this is open obviously this has to be open or we'd be stuck so asking are they both open is the same as asking is this open well yes correct and if it were if it were so, we would of course need this to be open as well. And then this column would be complete. And there's an area over here you have to explore that has no monsters for you to dead end in. So I think that's a kind of rule that I've never noticed before. Is that like if you're going to explore an area, you need either a dead end, sorry, a monster or a treasure room at the end of it. There can't be an area that you go into and accomplish nothing. So that's kind of cool. So now we see, by the way, that the kind the path I traced out earlier can't possibly work because we'd be putting a treasure room here. Where is the exit to this treasure room? That seems important, right? I don't know. I guess another point is there's... There's... Only one wall in this area. Right? No. There's only one non-wall. Excuse me. So there are two walls. And I don't think they can be these two. Can they? Maybe. If we also put walls here. No, this can't be a wall because then this would be a dead end. So if we if we if we made these both open, it seems like that would be okay. Maybe. No, this all falls apart. There's nothing you can do down here. So anyway, I, I said 
I didn't think it could be these two that were walls. And I kind of bifurcated to get there, but the point is that means this is a wall. And that means... Not sure. This has to be a wall as well, doesn't it? No, because again, you could potentially do this. see where I'm supposed to be working. Maybe this area. I was thinking maybe avoiding a two by two here would be hard, but I guess not really. We know that there are two walls here and one non-wall because of this six, and so that We've already ruled out the possibility of a two by two. It seems sort of likely that this is it just because this is a one, but it's not a proof. I mean, let's imagine this were a wall. Let's, oops. Oh, man, I don't know. Like, this is the kind of game, I think, where I could solve stuff just by guessing, like, pretty quickly. Just do a bunch of guess and check. I don't really want to do that. But also, I'm finding I spend so long on these puzzles that I'm not really having a great time. Like, I'd rather be plugging together robots in the food factory, right? So let's just test that theory that the guess and check gets you there pretty fast. Let's say this were the opening. Well, you know, let's test this one because that's the one I think is most likely to be wrong. We get this and that, this, all of this, which means, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I guess this has to be the last wall to avoid being a problem. This goes out, and now we run out of walls for this column. Yeah, so as predicted, this in fact can't be the only way out. Could this? I think that we're going to run into the problem here, right? This, this is the problem area that was highlighted by that last poke. Is that if these are both open, then we need to to do this, which puts that in. Well, maybe let's not start there. Let's continue guessing. Let's suppose this were the way out. Then we'd have this stuff. And again, this. But now it seems I do have enough walls for this area should I wish to use one, right? Either of these two could be a wall. And there's one more wall in here? Well, it had better be this one, right? Maybe that's where I could have started all. No, until I put this down, I couldn't make that conclusion. This has to be a wall to avoid these two if this isn't a wall, one of these two definitely is not a wall also, and we get a two by two. Did 
There's one more wall here. It can't be this one. So we'd have it that end, so it must be here. And we get all of this. One last open space in the row can't be here. Gives us this. And we've had, again, this dead end. Yeah. So again, the way, the way that I guessed this thing was impossible. So indeed, what we thought might be likely is that this has to, the one has to be the way through. I didn't find out for any satisfying reason. I've now even sort of forgotten why that was the case. Like, couldn't, hang on, let's, let's double check that. Why couldn't this have been the way? We get this stuff. This four gives us this wall, which gives us these. We have this, that has to be a wall. Wait a minute, doesn't it have to be a wall? No. Well, wait a minute, this is just totally bogus, right? From over here, again, you can't, you can't satisfy this column at all. So we do get this. Okay, time for more guess and check since that's what we said we're doing today. Let's suppose this were a wall. Actually, I think it's sort of likely that it is, right? Because if we do this, there's still several squares down here we have to explore, right? So there's only room for one more wall in this entire column. And if it were here, then fine, we go, we, if it were here, we'd have to go down this way. If this weren't it, then there'd be no way to explore the remaining spaces on this column. So yeah, this, this is impossible. This is the wall. Because it lets us get back to the treasure room without having to fork. Now, I want to say that this has to be a wall. I don't think that's a conclusion I can draw yet because my, my thinking was okay well if this were here we would need a wall there and then like don't we kind of have an area we need to explore that's difficult to get to but I, I think we could in principle like wrap around like well no well if this were a wall this couldn't be a wall we need this dead end to wrap around somehow but I guess it could go like that right And then we'd have this. Yeah. Oh, no, not that, but... Oh yeah, we do sort of run into a problem with this too eventually, huh? So in fact, yeah, this can't be open. And then we get this. Which looks like this must be how that's all organized. This can't be the only wall because that would be a dead end. This has to be open. Okay, now we finally have the column and all this is sorted. Yeah, see, I don't know, like when you, when you commit to just bifurcating, it's not that hard but it doesn't feel very satisfying to do. And I don't know what other like 
more clever things I was supposed to do to get there. I don't know. I think I might be done with dungeons and diagrams. I finished more than half of them. What, what more could you ask for? Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.